do you feel like the fear of persecution might be keeping you from tapping into your magic fully? Well, I'm going to talk about an Akashic record reading that I just did with a client in case it helps you on your journey as well. The client was not coming to me for this specifically. <laughs> it just happened to turn out that way, okay? So they were actually selling half of their business. Uh, her and her business partner were like splitting up and she was going to go on to her next great adventure and it was causing her a lot of anxiety. So she wanted some help traversing through that which we definitely did talk about. We talked about how having rocky foundations can create a lot of anxiety. She was also thinking about moving. And so if you have children within you that are dealing with a lot of abandonment and trust wounds, that can be very triggering for them. Also, I wanna say that this conversation might also be triggering for you because of the persecution things that we're gonna talk about. So just make sure you're in a good space, like mentally and in a good space physically in order to receive this message. But before I tapped into her energy field, like before we met on Zoom, one-on-one, uh, -on -one. <laughs> I always check in with your higher self beforehand to see if they have any messages. I build a crystal grid. I pull oracle cards. I write out all my notes of whatever your higher self wants me to transcribe. And the version of her that was presenting to me through the etheric field was very different than the version <laughs> that I met with on Zoom. And I said, do you know that you have a lot of walls and guards up? I said, you have a completely different energy meeting face to face. Uh, and, and, and not a negative thing, you know, of course it was just, she has a lot of protection. And I was like, why have you felt like you've had to protect yourself so much? And it was the fear of persecution. And then when we got into it, 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 it was a lot of persecution that was happening in her childhood from her family, like various family members. And so that was skewing her perception of reality moving forward into adulthood and was keeping a lot of people at bay in her life because of the fear of being seen. And the fear of being seen was wounds from childhood, right? Like, not wanting to show emotions or thoughts or opinions, but it goes even deeper than that. It's not allowing people to see her magic. Cause I was like, oh, you, you, you're giving very much witch, okay? <laughs> like that some people have a very specific witch archetype. I don't like to always use that word because it comes with like so much persecution energy with it. Um, she was just very like woodsy of the earth. <laughs> and she had like this beautiful, like motherly type of energy. And I asked, are you trying to hide that from people? And she said, yes because she kind of lives in a smaller community and she doesn't want to be you know persecuted <laughs> whether that's from people's thoughts and judgments and so she had like these strong guards up so people couldn't see that about her i said yeah that's a process and a journey that you have to go on of learning how to down regulate your frequency and the words that you speak because that is a real fear like it's it's who's gonna call us wackadoo or who's gonna pass judgment now that is something that you have to learn how to overcome okay <laughs> because because there is a there's a point where we have to stand in our divinity and sovereignty and like not care what other people think but that's something that you have to slowly incrementally incrementally learn how to do and sometimes quickly but you got to imagine you have inner children inside and if they're already afraid of being persecuted for regular human things perceivability now we're adding magic on top of it it's like okay well that's a lot and then I was digging around in her Akashic records and I said you have actually been persecuted in many different lifetimes for various different things and so this is actually a karmic trauma wound that is rolling over and I said but you're gonna clear it out in this one okay so this is where this might get a little bit triggering okay so <laughs> just bear that in mind so my friend Kimberly gave uh, me and a bunch of other people this exercise and I just thought it was so fascinating and so if you're up to it we'll do it together okay <laughs> so I want you to close your eyes and I want you to envision that you are at the Salem witch trials Okay, and there's a fire going on, and there's people around the fire. Are you in the fire, or are you watching the fire? And this doesn't mean necessarily that you are part of the Salem Witch Trials, okay? This is just more, do you have persecution energetic cords running in your system from various timelines? And then sometimes people are the persecutors. Sometimes we play that role where we're the villain in different things. So that, and that's a long discussion about how sometimes we have to play that role in order to become better healers and make sure that it doesn't happen in the collective with others, especially if you're an activator, if you help people step into their gifts, sometimes you need to play that role so that you can help them traverse through those things, but longer discussion. 
But if you're also the one that was observing the fire, maybe you are somebody who wasn't necessarily oppressed yourself, but you help people that are oppressed. When I was in her system, I was saying, yeah, I can see where it's been multitudes of timelines. And then you really took a big hit in this one because you soul contracted to have that karmic lesson clear out. And so you had to experience that in childhood. And I said, this is where you have to be very mindful about our inner children. Okay. Because you can be a very conscious multidimensional being all the live long day and understand, you know, why soul contracts happen and the healer's path and you know, all this stuff but your inner children and your past versions still lived through those experiences and it was very painful and traumatic for them. So we can still hold the conscious awareness of why, but we still need to help them process through those things because it was a very real visceral experience. And so you need to hold grace and space to help them process through their emotions and that trauma and that PTSD, which means you're gonna have to feel it in your body while you're processing it with them. But when you're coming in as the higher self, we're more observing it instead of being attached to it. And we're saying that happened to y'all. Let me as the higher self and the guide and the protector and the healer come in and help y'all work through it. So that way you're not attaching as if it's still happening to you and you're taking those lenses off. And the funny thing about this client is that persecution clear outs is one of her biggest archetypes. I said, you are going to help so many people strip that down out of their energetic system so that their inner children can tap back into their magic. I said, first, that starts with like basic human things, right? Like uh, people pleasing and masking and, and low self worth and, and confidence and things like those are all fear of perceptions as well. And then once you strip those away, now we can get to the magic. Okay. And even maybe different timeline versions of them that have also dealt with persecution. Cause that's a lot of us light workers and empaths. We've had those things happen to us in, in multitudes of lifetimes. And I was explaining the beautiful thing about having social media now is that we can all band together. And there's so many of us that are just being like, F this, I'm just going to be my most magical self in this timeline because we're actually in a safer timeline because we have the connection to one another and we can tribe together <laughs> and keep each other um, in just safer containers because of the outreach that social media has allowed us to have. I was explaining the only way that you can help other people with those things is if you learn how to do it with self. That's called the healer's path. And then you unlock your magic and your biggest blessing for other people through through going through those things with your inner children and your past versions. So I said that you are actually going to become one of the big leaders in persecution clear outs, like karmic clear outs. I said, there's all these people that, you know, I reference and I say, hey, if you're dealing with this, then you need to go see her or you need to go watch him and point them. I said, you're gonna be <laughs> the one for that. And she got like a little nervous and anxious especially her inner children. She was like, who, me? And I'm like, yes, you. <laughs> um, and no pressure to do that. We all have free will. You can do whatever you want in this lifetime. Like if you want to go be a firefighter instead or something like that's fine too. But I just wanted to show her her greatest capacity. And that this thing that has brought a lot of strife into her life is actually going to be her biggest blessing and other people in the collective's biggest blessing. I'd love to hear in the comments if this message resonated with you. If you feel like you've uh, found some of those chords within yourself as well. Uh, listening to other people, healers talk about how to do persecution clear outs is very beneficial for these things. If you would like your own Akashic Record reading so you can understand yourself at deeper levels in your archetypes, you can go to my profile and click or check the description box here below or in the comments.